A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 4th of October 2023. Now before getting into the news article discussion, I have an important announcement for you. The announcement is regarding pre-storming test series, the most awaited batch 2 of pre-storming 2024 test series is starting from 15th October 2023. The test will be starting on 22nd October 2023 the orientation for the test will be given on 15th October admissions are open get your admissions done before the test starts so with this announcement let us move on to the news article discussion displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today as you can see we have chosen news articles from monday's newspaper as well so without much delay let us get into the news article discussion Take a look at this news article from 2nd October newspaper. The article says that Tamil Nadu's CM and the governor will pay tribute to the statue of Mahatma Gandhi today. This is about the news article. In this context, we'll look at the important events of Gandhian era of freedom struggle. See, the Gandhian era of freedom struggle started with Gandhi's return to India. After nearly 21 years in South Africa, Gandhi returned to India on January 9, 1915. As you all know, currently Pravasi Bharatiya Divas (PBD) is celebrated on 9th January every year. After returning to India, Gandhi joined the INC on the request of Gopala Krishna Gokhale. Gokhale became his political guru. Later, Gandhi toured all of India for about a year. Now before getting into the mainstream Indian national movement Gandhi took up three local causes these three are called the early movements by Gandhi ji in this the first one is the Champaran Satyagraha of 1917 in the Champaran Satyagraha Gandhi ji took up the cause of the indigo planters on the request of Rajkumar Shukla he was also successful in fighting against the Tinkatiya system The second one is the Allahabad mill strike 1918. Here the issue was the discontinuation of plaque bonus by the mill owners of Ahmedabad. Gandhi ji asked the workers to go on a strike and to remain non-violent. He undertook a hunger strike in support of the workers. So this was Gandhi ji's first hunger strike in India. The issue was resolved when the mill owners and the workers agreed to meet in the middle ground. The last one is the Kheda Satyagraha 1918. Here the issue was the government's insistence on keeping the taxes at the same level even though there was a drought in Gujarat that year. Gandhi ji supported the peasants and asked them to withhold the taxes. Finally the government budget and taxes were suspended for the year 1919 and 1920 it was during the kheda satyagraha that sardar patel became a follower of gandhi so these three are the early movements by gandhi ji addressing the local issues after this gandhi ji started taking up national causes for example it was the raulat satyagraha of 1919 that brought the national stage the raulat act as you all know gave power to the government to arrest any person without any trial gandhi ji organized peaceful strikes protest and acts of civil disobedience against the royal attack it was during this period only the infamous jallian wala bag massacre took place post the jallian wala bag massacre violence violence started erupting so gandhi ji called off the raulat satyagraha The Satyagraha failed to achieve its immediate objective of repealing the Rowlatt Act. But the failure of Rowlatt Satyagraha resulted in a large national movement which is nothing but the non-cooperation movement. For your information note that Rowlatt Act was repealed only in 1922. Now coming to the non-cooperation movement 1922-22 now what were the causes of this movement? See firstly people were dissatisfied with the government of India act 1919 secondly failure of the raulat satyagraha and jallian wala bag massacre pushed people to take up non cooperation movements then the reentry of the extremists into the congress post the lucknow pact of 1916 gave congress a militant leaning 
Due to this, Congress started focusing more on mass movement rather than prayers and petitions. The next reason is the Khilafat movement. The Khilafat movement was launched under the leadership of Ali brothers, Maulana Azad, Hakim Ajmal Khan and Hasrat Mohani. It got the support of Mahatma Gandhi. The movement was against decision of the British to dissolve the Ottoman Khilafat after Turkey's loss in World War I. The KF movement merged with the non-cooperation movement. So these are all some of the important causes of the non-cooperation movement. During the non-cooperation movement, Gandhiji announced that if people participate in the movement, Swaraj can be achieved in one year. But this promise was not delivered upon. This is because Gandhiji withdrew the movement post the infamous Chauri Chaura incident of 1922. After withdrawing the non-cooperation movement, Gandhiji took a backstage in the national movement and started focusing on social work. Gandhiji again came back to the national stage during the civil disobedience movement of 1930. Between 1922 and 1930, one important event happened. In 1924, Gandhiji became the president of Congress in the Belguam session. Now, coming to the civil disobedience movement, in the 1929 Lucknow session, the INC decided Purna Swaraj as the aim of the national movement and civil disobedience can be employed to achieve it. The INC also requested Gandhiji to start a movement to achieve Purna Swaraj. So, in 1930, Gandhiji presented his famous 11 demands. With no positive responses from the British government, Gandhiji decided to launch the civil disobedience movement. In March 1930, Gandhiji launched the famous Dandi March. He opposed the 1882 Salt Act through the march. On reaching Dandi, he broke the salt law by making salt. The march received international coverage. This brought the Indian national movement to the limelight in the Western media. After this, the movement started spreading all over India. People started defying other unpopular tax laws like the forest laws, Chaukida tax, land tax as a mark of civil disobedience. The British started repressing the movement with heavy hat. Gandhiji was arrested and INC was declared illegal in 1932. But later the movement came to an end after the signing of the Gandhi Irwin Pact. As a result of the Gandhi Irwin Pact, Gandhi agreed to attend the Second Roundtable Conference 1931. In the Second Roundtable Conference, Gandhiji and Dr. Ambedkar locked horns over the issue of separate electorate for the depressed class. Finally, after the Pune Pact of 1932, Gandhiji and Dr. Ambedkar agreed that no separate electorate would be provided to the depressed class. Instead, seats would be reserved for the depressed classes. In 1934, another important event happened. In 1934, Gandhi resigned from the Congress party membership. He quitted because of the emergence of various ideologies within the Indian National Congress. In 1940, Gandhi launched the individual Satyagraha as a response to the British government's August offer 1940. The British government extended the August offer to secure Indian cooperation in the British war efforts of World War II. According to the August offer, after the war, a representative body of Indians would be formed to draft the new constitution. Through the August offer, the British government said the dominion status would be provided to India in the future, but the offer was rejected by both INC and Muslim League. Gandhi was dissatisfied with his offer and decided to initiate individual Satyagraha. Acharya Vinoba Bhave was the first individual Satyagrahi followed by Jawaharlal Nehru and Brahma Dutt. The Satyagrahis also launched the Delhi Chalo movement in the later stages of the movement. In December 1941, Gandhiji called off the movement. Then in 1942 came the Crips mission was also aimed at obtaining Indian cooperation for the British war efforts in the Second World War. As part of the Crips mission, the British government mentioned that India would be granted dominion status after the war and it would be allowed to frame its own constitution. 
The Krebs mission was also opposed by all the segments. Gandhi ji famously referred to the offers made by the Krebs mission as a post data check on a crashing bank. The failure of the Krebs mission led to the Quit India movement of 1942. Gandhi ji launched the Quit India movement from Mumbai's Gowalia Tank Maidan also known as August Kranti Maidan. During the Quit India movement, Gandhi ji gave the famous slogan Do or Die. The British government responded with violence. The INC was banned. Congress leaders including Gandhi ji were jailed for almost the whole of the war. The movement conveyed to the British government that anything sort of a complete independence would not satisfy the Indians. So after the World War 2 when it was clear that the British would give complete independence to India Gandhi ji started campaigning against the partition of the country Gandhi ji directed Bulabhai Jeevanji Desai to make an attempt to appease the Muslim League leaders the resulting Desai Liaquat plan of 1945 failed to bring a compromise between the INC and Muslim League Finally as per the Indian Independence Act of 1947 India and Pakistan were partitioned and granted independence Gandhi ji did not celebrate the independence and he was busy in Nawakali which is now in Bangladesh trying to bring peace in the region So these are all some of the important timelines of events in the Gandhian era of independence very very important topic just make note of the timeline revise it multiple times so that you can use it in your main sansar writing so with these learnt points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article it talks about wachati tragedy see in 1992 a group of tribal people living in the wachati village faced a traumatic event at the hands of the state government officials accused them of illegal sandwood possession and smuggling Police and forest officials physically attacked the villagers, destroyed their homes, contaminated their wells, and even subjected 18 women, including a girl, to sexual assault. Recently, High Court has delivered judgment on this Pachati case and brought justice to the tribal community that suffered police brutality 30 years ago. This is the crux of the news article given here. So, this news article basically talks about tribes now let us see if any previous question matches with the situation in that way i found this 2021 upsc mains question examine the uniqueness of the tribal knowledge system when compared to mainstream knowledge and cultural system see first carefully read and understand the question pay attention to the keywords here the keyword is examine if the question has the word examine we have to look into the topic in detail inspect it and establish the key facts in this answer we have to provide various key points to support the uniqueness of the tribal knowledge system first let us see about the introduction part give a brief and concise introduction that describe the context for your answer in the introduction you can explain some general points about tribal knowledge system tribal knowledge system or like the special knowledge and wisdom that gets passed down from one generation to another in small closed groups of tribes hence tribal knowledge systems or intergenerational knowledge here intergenerational knowledge is an important keyword so you have to use keywords like these in your introduction you can also explain that unlike mainstream knowledge systems that rely on scientific research tribal knowledge systems have developed over centuries through observation of nature and through personal experiences it includes traditional agriculture water harvesting weather prediction medicinal practices among others this traditional knowledge system is unique and different from the mainstream knowledge so in this way you can explain traditional knowledge system in your introduction try to write four to five lines for introduction do not go more than that now coming to the body of the answer here you have to explain how traditional knowledge system or unique and different from mainstream knowledge system give a simple subheading uniqueness of tribal knowledge system under the subheading we are going to explain the unique characteristics of tribal knowledge system 
you can also mention examples of tribal knowledges wherever necessary just say the main difference between tribal and mainstream knowledge system see traditional knowledge is specific to experience of a particular group or tribe while mainstream knowledge is based on formal education research and information widely accepted by larger societies now we can explain the unique features of tribal knowledge system one by one see tribal knowledge is local and contextual see tribal knowledge is deeply rooted in the local environment and ecosystems of the community it is specific to the geographic region reflecting the intimate connection between indigenous people and their surroundings secondly they have holistic world view see traditional knowledge often embraces a holistic world view that encompasses spiritual cultural and ecological dimensions it emphasizes connectedness with nature animal and fellow community members for example the gond tribe in central india has a rich tradition of worshiping spirits of forest rivers and hills their rituals are deeply connected to nature and aim to maintain harmony with it mainstream systems tend to be more compartmentalized and lack holistic view thirdly tribal communities have traditional ecological knowledge tk indigenous tribes possess a profound understanding of their local ecosystem including knowledge about medicinal plants sustainable agriculture and resource management practices this knowledge is invaluable for biodiversity conservation and sustainable living for example the awareness among tribals of andaman and nicobar about a wall of sea helped them to safeguard against tsunami in 2004 next is about cultural heritage tribal knowledge is linked to cultural identity and heritage and contributing to a sense of belonging and continuity mainstream knowledge may lack this cultural depth if you take bilala tribe in madhya pradesh they are known for intricate pottery making it is not only a means of living but also a way to express their cultural identity and stories through art then traditional knowledge systems or community centric especially they are communal with collective decision making and knowledge sharing within the community mainstream systems may prioritize individualism and specialization for example the naha tribe in northeast india have village councils that play a significant role in decision making they rely on collective decisions to address issues within the community Apart from this traditional knowledge system have adaptation and resilience tribes have demonstrated adaptability and resilience during environmental changes and challenges indigenous communities have often developed innovative solutions based on their understanding of local ecosystems for example the varali tribe in maharashtra has traditional knowledge of farming methods that are well suited to their local environment they use crop rotation and organic farming techniques that have been refined over generations and finally tribal knowledge system helps in conservation of languages they play a pivotal role in preserving indigenous languages which are crucial for the transmission of wisdom and cultural practices many tribes in india have its own language and their traditional songs and poems which preserve their cultural wisdom history and values so in this way you can explain the unique characteristics of tribal knowledge system with simple examples you can also use some of the examples that i mentioned in the discussion since this is a 10 mark question five to six unique features with relevant examples or enough now coming to the conclusion part in conclusion you can give a balanced view traditional and mainstream societies are not mutually exclusive systems constant interaction and mutual dependence have enriched both system traditional knowledge system stands out for their deep connection to nature reliance on oral tradition communal decision making and unique cultural practices while mainstream knowledge system is known for rapid advances in technology with accuracy and reliability so in this way you can end this particular question hope now you got an idea about how to present a question with the keyword examine so with these learned points and now let us move on to the next news article discussion 
take a look at this text and context article from monday's newspaper the news is that central government has announced 100 crore fund for aspirational blocks program see this program aims to address the inequalities by improving governance and last mile service delivery at the block level remember aspirational blocks program was launched last year it is based on the aspirational districts program which was originally launched in 2018 so in our news article discussion today we are going to revise the aspirational districts program first of all what are aspirational districts see aspirational districts are those districts in india that are affected by poor socio economic indicators these districts are called aspirational because the improvement in these districts can lead to the overall improvement in human development in india at present 117 districts are identified as aspirational districts so who implement the program this program is implemented by niti aayog in addition to that individual ministries have assumed responsibility to drive the progress of districts now talking about the objectives of the program see one of its main objective is to monitor the real time progress of aspirational districts this monitoring of real time progress is an important aspect of the program aspirational districts program is based on 49 indicators from the five identified thematic areas these indicators focus closely on improving people's health and nutrition education agriculture and water resources financial inclusion and skill development and basic infrastructure now let us see the broad outline of the program see the adp works under three c's that is convergence collaboration and competition first convergence here convergence means a convergence of central and state schemes the program also talks about the convergence of various types of the government second is collaboration here the program focuses on collaboration between central level offices state level offices and district collectors through these collaborations impactful partnership can be developed between government market and civil society finally competition good competition will allow result in progress this competition will provide a spirit of the mass movement and it will also foster accountability on district governments so these are all the three broad contours of the program remember these keywords convergence collaboration and competition not just in this specific program you can incorporate these keywords in your main sentence anywhere when a question is asked about a scheme mainly in the way forward portion okay lastly we shall see the significance of this program see first important significance is inclusive development the program is designed to uplift the most underdeveloped and disadvantaged districts in the country by focusing on these regions it aims to ensure that the benefits of development reach every citizen reducing regional disparities next is poverty elevation aspirational districts often have high poverty rate and lack access to basic amenities the program seek to reduce poverty and improve the standard of living in these areas by implementing targeted initiatives next significance is access to healthcare and education the program emphasizes improving healthcare facilities and educational outcomes in these districts next is enhancing economic growth by investing in infrastructure agriculture and skill development the program aims to boost economic growth in these districts this can create job opportunities and increase income levels for the local population apart from this under the program a better connectivity between rural to urban areas has been created for example bijapur in chatishgarh and malkangiri in odisha have greatly improved their roadway networks and infrastructure finally this program makes use of data driven governance the program uses its data and metrics to assess the progress of each district this data driven approach encourages transparency and accountability in governance so to summarize aspirational district program adp is one of the outcomes focused governance in the world if you look closely the program mainly aims on implementing sustainable development goals so these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about adp very important you can quote it as an example in your main answer okay so these learned points and all this move on to the next news article discussion 
take a look at this article this article talks about the picture taken at the world mosquito programs factory in medellin colombia here the scientists are breeding the mosquitoes to carry the bacteria wolbachia which can interrupt the transmission cycle of dengue and other diseases thereby control it this is more like an avatar movie where genetically matched humanoids called avatars are created to fight navi in pandora world likewise here we are creating a good mosquito to fight bad mosquito so this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us see about the bacteria wolbachia from prelims perspective firstly know that wolbachia is a tiny bacteria that is usually present in almost 60 percentage of all species of insects including several mosquito species but sadly this bacterium is not present in the adas agypti mosquito the primary culprit responsible for transmitting dengue chikungunya and zika so wolbachia is one of the world's most common parasitic microbes and possibly it is the most common reproductive parasite in the world so with this basic understanding now let us quickly go through what is wolbachia method see the wolbachia method is a technique used to control the spread of viral diseases which are transmitted by mosquito like dengue zika and chikungunya this method came into existence in 2008 an australian based research group world mosquito program wmp discovered that adis agypti mosquito cannot spread dengue when they are carrying wolbachia bacteria the reason is dengue virus struggles to replicate inside the mosquito when these bacteria are present so this type of bacterium can be intentionally introduced into mosquitoes to reduce their ability to transmit these diseases so coming to the question how it can be done so as we saw earlier when bacteria is present in the mosquito the disease causing viruses cannot replicate so small number of wolbachia carrying mosquitoes are released in targeted areas they then breed with wild mosquitoes and the process goes on over a time the percentage of mosquitoes carrying wolbachia grows until it remains high without the need for further releases for example let us see a study in indonesia to understand the concept better see since 2017 a joint study is conducted by wmp at indonesia they have been releasing lab bred wolbachia mosquitoes across a few dengue fever red zones in the indonesian city of yogyakarta the trial results published by the new england jersey of medicine showed that Delaying mosquitoes with wolbachia reduced dengue cases by 77 percentage and hospitalizations up to 86 percentage. So this method proves to be good in disease control. So this is about wolbachia bacterium and the wolbachia method. In 2023 prelims we had a question regarding wolbachia method. So it is very important to know about it. That's why we made an effort to discuss it. So with these learned point now let us move on to the next news article discussion now take a look at this news article this news article talk about the nobel prize winners in physics these scientists are given award for their research using ultra quick light flashes that enable the study of electrons inside atoms and molecules so in this context let us try to understand this concept from prelims perspective See as we all know an atom is the smallest part into which an element can be divided it comprises of a nucleus consists of proton a neutron and electron that travel around this nucleus here the electrons they move so fast that it is impossible to observe them in real time but the work of these scientists brought us closer to observing and studying the movement of electrons they can be observed by producing pulses of light that last only atto seconds atto seconds is nothing but 1 into 10 to the power minus 18 of a second now let us understand this concept better using a real life example see roughly this can be compared to a high shuttered speed camera if a normal camera is used to capture a moving train the image will be blurred but a high shuttered 
speed camera can freeze motion of the train and capture a clear image of the train. Likewise, the Atto second experiment gives humanity a new set of tools for exploring the world of electrons inside atoms and molecules. These Atto second pulses allow scientists to capture images of activities that happen in incredibly short span of time. As a result, scientists can use such pulses to explore short-lived atoms and molecular processes imbibed in the fields like material science, electronics and catalysis. So one of the possible application of the method is to study molecular level changes in blood to identify diseases and analyze the genetic level changes. And moreover, a better understanding of how electrons move and transmit energy can also help in creating more efficient electronic gadgets. These are all some of the important points that you have to remember about this news article. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this article which talks about the sorrow of Bihar. Here the article is mentioning about Kosi River. So in this discussion, we are going to see about River Kosi from Prelims perspective. See the River Kosi is a transboundary river which flows through China, Nepal and India. It is one of the left bank tributaries of River Ganga. Talking about the source of Kosi River, Kosi River has its source in Tibet that is world's highest upland and then drains a large part of Nepal before emerging onto the Gangetic Plains of India. Talking about some of its important tributaries, Sankosi, Arun and Tamur are some of the important tributaries of River Kosi. Of these rivers, River Tamur is originating from the Kanchanjunga area in the east and River Aruna and Sankosi from Tibet. Moreover, from a major confluence of tributaries in the north of the gorge in Nepal, the river Kosi is also known as Sapta Kosi and this point is also called as Triveni. Now moving on to Indian part of Kosi, see the Sapta Kosi crosses into northern Bihar where it branches into distributaries before joining the Ganga near Katihar which is in Bihar. Talking about some of the important characteristics of the river, see the first important characteristic is that the river is unstable in nature. This is because the heavy silt it carries during the monsoon season and results in flooding in India. So that is why the nickname Soro of Bihar. Secondly, peaks located in the basin of Kosi or Mount Everest, Kanjanjunga, Lhotse, Makalu and Cho you. Thirdly, the Kosi alluvial fan is one of the largest in the world. There is enough evidence of lateral channel shifting extending 120 kilometers during the past 250 years. Fourthly, an important issue is avulsion of river Kosi. Here avulsion refers to the phenomenon of change of the course of river flow. It generally results in the abandonment of the old established river channel and formation of a new channel. And finally, Saptakoshi High Dam is a multi-purpose dam proposed to be constructed on the Saptakoshi River of Nepal by India and Nepal. So these are all some of the very important points that you have to remember about River Kosi. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Now take a look at this first question, which of the following factors prompted the central government to launch the aspirational district program option a overpopulation in urban area option b economic disparities among states option c declining agricultural productivity and option d financial exclusion in rural areas see the correct answer for the question is option b the aspirational districts program was launched by the indian government to address and reduce economic disparities among states by focusing on the most underdeveloped and disadvantaged districts so the correct answer here is option b now moving on look at this question about nobel prize three statements are given statement one atto second pulse of light is termed as a billionth of a billionth of a second statement two its application ranges from spectroscopy, electronics to communication. Statement 3, Nobel Prize for 2023 is given for the experiment related to Atto second. 
see here the correct answer for the question is option c all the three pairs are correct here in other words a two second pulse of light can be said as 1 into 10 to the power minus 18 second so here the correct answer is option c only three pairs Moving on, with reference to the British colonial rule in India, consider the following statements. Three statements are given. Statement 1. Mahatma Gandhi was instrumental in the abolition of the system of indentured labor. This statement is actually correct. Mahatma Gandhi was instrumental in the abolition of the system of indentured labor in South Africa. Look at the second statement in Lord Chelmsford war conference Mahatma Gandhi did not support the resolution on recruiting Indians for world war this statement is actually incorrect Gandhiji actually supported the resolution on recruiting Indians for world war look at this third statement consequent upon the breaking of salt law by Indian people the INC was declared illegal by the colonial rule this statement is actually correct so the correct answer for the question is option B, 1 and 3 only. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now thank you for listening.